how do you add medications that are issued by the hospital to the patient record in System 1? I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in this episode and make it so easy for you. So let's tech enhance your primary care and learning. So why would you want to add medications that you're not going to be issuing? Well, there are many types of medications that are issued by specialists in particular that patients won't be able to have from general practice, either because it's not eligible in the NHS or because it's not safe to prescribe from general practice and needs specialist intervention. These are classically traffic-like medications in different areas, or it could be medications the patient is receiving privately or from other areas. There are two main ways that you can add these types of medications to the patient record. And we're going to show you both the pros and cons of each and how you can do that in a demonstration in a minute or two. Key thing to know that both of these methods allow you to still use things like intelligent prescribing within system one. So wrecking up against things like allergies, interactions, that kind of stuff, that still works and which method you use should ideally be the same in the practice. So please don't have it one person's doing one thing, another person's doing another, because it gets really confusing. The first method is that you add the medication onto the repeat template. This is how you'd add all other types of medication that the patient may take, but you change the amount that the patient gets and you add some extra instructions to try and prevent that medication from actually being dispensed at the pharmacy. The benefits of this, that it's really easy to see, or we printed out on things like home visit sheets if you're using them, and also really easy to link up with other kind of things like reports and various other views, because it's with all the other medications that the patient may have. The downside is it is still technically possible to issue a prescription that the patient could potentially cash in at a pharmacy, and obviously that may not be the safest option for you to consider. Alternately, you can add it on the other medication tab, which we'll show you in the demonstration. This has the key benefit that it is impossible for the prescription to be generated. However, sometimes the other medication tab doesn't work as well with different views, printouts, for example, and some reports. It just requires you to think about it a little bit more. Additionally, when you're using System 1, you do need to raise the other medication part on the repeat template view so you can actually see it easily. Otherwise, it can be easily missed. As I said, different places have different preferences, particularly if you look at companies like Arden's that do a lot of reports and support for practices, they generally recommend using the repeat template method because also it links with a lot of their reports a lot better than using the other medication version. Well, let's show you how to do both of these, shall we? So let's show you how to add medications that you don't want to issue at the practice because they're receiving them from elsewhere or because they're not appropriate to do so. I'm using Minnie Mouse to show you how to do this. And if we're going to do the first route, which is adding it as a repeat medication, you go to the repeat template view and simply click on add repeat medication. Let's try adding Humira, which is a medication used for rheumatoid arthritis. To be clear, Minnie Mouse does not have this. I'm going to select it and click OK. It then brings up this reminder that this is a red medication and only to be issued by secondary care, but we know that we're just putting this on for patient information and our information. I'm going to ask to put the dose, so I'm going to put once a month. The amount, put this as the smallest amount possible, which is often one. And then in the script notes, you add the instructions issued by hospital, please do not issue from the GP. I also like to do this in the administrative notes as well. I then change the duration to 900 days, which is nice and long and hopefully should prevent repeat issuing and change the review date to today because then after this, it will bring up a reminder saying that you can't issue it again. Most important is you deselect these two boxes right here. So patient can initiate issues should be deselected and repeat templates can be reauthorized should be deselected. That's to be clear. Make sure they do not have ticks in them. Then it's useful to add a clinical reason you're prescribing this. As I said, Minnie Mouse doesn't have rheumatoid arthritis. So for purposes of this, I'm just going to say she's got malignant tumor of the lung, which apparently she does. And then you click OK. And as you can see, this has now been added to the patient's repeat list as Humira, one dose to be injected once a month. And importantly, issued by the hospital, please do not issue from the GP practice. Technically, a prescription could be generated. However, you'd hope it should not be dispensed. And basically, it's there for everyone to see. It works with intelligent prescribing and all the other things within the system to make sure it's alerted to you when you're using it. Alternately, if you want to make sure it could never be prescribed, the other option is to add as an other medication. To do that, you right click on medication and click on the question mark record other medication. You still get the drug browser. So we're going to do the same thing again, Humira. Go to the 80 milligram version and then simply get a slightly different drug window. You can put start and end date, that's relevant. 
You can choose where the source of this is. So other medication, dental medication, or in this instance, hospital medication. Then you add the dose. So once a month. And then a quantity, let's put one, just because otherwise it pings up an annoying box every single time if you don't. And then script notes issued by hospital only. Unfortunately, there is a character limit it stops round about here and you can't copy and paste, which is really annoying in this particular window. But we're gonna click OK. And if we go back to the repeat mechanism, you can now see it's been added as Humira here, once a month issued by hospital only you cannot issue this medication. You can amend the dose instructions, but if you needed to change the formulation, like the dosing or the roots or something like that, you do have to stop it and add it back on because otherwise it won't let you do it. And that's how you do it. I hope you found that guide about how to add medications to the patient record without actually issuing them useful to yourself. If so, leave a like down below because that lets me know this is useful content for you. And especially, a comment to let me know which of those two methods you prefer using in your practice and why. I'm really keen to try and figure out this debate and answer which one is the best route to do. Additionally, if you're looking for other tips of how to use System 1 more effectively, check out this episode right here. Alternately, you should probably recommend another one for you right here. And as always, I'm here to help tech enhance your primary care and learning. Catch you in the next episode.